Just like the moon, like the sun, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. That's a small part of a poem by Maya Angelou. The first time I heard that poem was May 11th, 2006. I call it my Phoenix Day. The truth is, I'm a Phoenix. That day in 2006, I was going through a divorce. I have two girls, three and under one, walking, breathing, hurt. Everything was a challenge. I attended this conference where Madeleine Albright spoke and she was introduced by Geraldine Ferraro. Some pretty serious speakers, but it is this poem that has changed my life. Now let me be straight. This poem does not mention Phoenix, but it does mention rising. And it was the first time that this poem resonated with me. I kept hearing the word rise. And for me, breathing was a struggle. Then it hit. I'm sitting here in this conference room, and I needed to find a way to pick myself up and begin the process of rising and resilience. Images of the phoenix came to my mind. Now, all the circumstances around my divorce were out of my control, how I felt. I needed to learn to breathe again. My heart hurt, but it beat. Boom, 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 boom. We all have resilience within ourselves. And because no matter what or who you are, you've overcome something. And you didn't believe that you could overcome. Broken heart, infidelity, divorce, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, being a caregiver. You are not alone. This is where we can ground ourselves. How many of you really know the story of the phoenix? This glorious bird, both in sight, sound, and its ability to fly great heights. It's so interesting that in all cultures, there are stories about this bird who rises from the ashes and becomes a new bird. It is not reborn to be the same bird, but the ashes of the last bird. Resilience is how the phoenix regrows itself. So how do we overcome the things that we need to overcome? Each of us does it differently. By digging into your brain, that's how we do it. Managing situations and choosing to make the changes to find the resources that will get us through the process of growth. As we dig through our past, we can notice how we operate and see the way we do. How do we create the patterns and how are the patterns created in the landscape that we had? Some of us operate in a state of fear because of Past, ex past experiences. Often, we get caught up in cycles because of the brain sums up our experiences to make the best decision possible. Just like the phoenix, the rise begins in an instant to form the new bird. Sometimes, our memories are like watching a horror movie, scary with something right around the corner. These movies are even scary if you watch them in the dark. Now imagine turning on the light and watching them in the, in the light probably less scary. Now, the great thing about that is that we can do that. We can remove the triggers that are tied to negative events. Training your brain to release the triggers is possible when they create a new, a new way to operate in. There are many ways to remove triggers, and doing so could be life-altering. Between the stimulus and the response, there's a magical space, and that's where the decisions are made. And when we actually learn to build or nurture the responses that we have, we can then make decisions quicker. Thinking and reactions are like any other task and can be done by training our minds by slowing down and making better decisions. Releasing the darkness from ourselves is another way to get our resilience and rise ourselves out of the flames. Learning to heal myself from past experiences and emotional triggers has been life-altering. No, I'm not talking about looking into a pen and making you erase your memories, sort of like in Men in Black. I seek resources when I find myself in the ashes. Finding the right resources for each one of us is so important. Meeting one person in your path can change your life. I walked into a therapist's office and therapists had offered 
this technique that he does on removing traumas. Reactions to events originally sounded like a lot of therapy to me, and to do it quickly was plain impossible. These techniques deal with the removing of negative triggers that are stored in the amygdala through the use of rubbing your hands, arms, or face. Yes, I just did say that if you touch yourself in a special way, you can heal yourself. <laughs> this technique I used was simple in its use, but complex in what it could do for you. It helped me create a, diff a different way of thinking, working on both the negative experience as well as in reinforcing future positive ex experiences. The touching I, ta I spoke about was used to create delta waves, which, is, which everybody creates at night anyway. It's part of your brain. The process is called depotentiation. And I actually became one of the first 100 people in the world to be certified practitioner of this method. Teaching us, our internal observer, how to have better reactions to outside influences will change your world. Using your own two hands, you could pick yourself up out of the ashes and help and heal yourself. Now let me remind you, any technique or resource that you use is great if you know it, but you need to process it and you need to do it. It can't just be that you know it and have the knowledge for it. Does anyone have a gym membership that they don't use? You don't get great results until you do it. When we install our own personal reset button, we are practicing it and then using it because that's where the trick is, is to being using the knowledge that we have. When I use these resources and techniques, I was surprised to see the different lifestyle changes I was, ha I was able to have. Th th there's a line in Dante's Inferno, in the middle of the journey of my life, I found myself in a dark wood, for I had lost the right path. This happened to me as well. I knew a lot of the techniques to do, but I didn't use them. And as the quote goes, I, eventually I, I would fight, find the right path, but in the most unlikely place. For me, that unlikely place was I had created a personal plan. This consisted of writing almost 50 letters to the people who, I meant, who meant the most to me, talk, telling them about why I felt I needed to do this. I felt my sacrifice was for the greater good. The floor of my life was being pulled out from under me, under my feet, and into the fires I, I went. I never experienced before. Conflicting thoughts. I love these people so much that I thought they were better off without me. And I, I, there were a few times during the, during the execution of this plan, I fell asleep, feeling that these were going to be my last breaths. The secret many of us don't talk about is mental health. And in that is that some people experience something that they really stress to the point of breaking. We don't talk about our, our mental health because it scares us. And statistics say that 89% of suicide attempts are unsuccessful, which means that there are many people who need to find a way to, for resilience and would rebuild once again. I'm a phoenix, and I am succeeding because I eventually chose to rise from my ashes and fly once again. We should not be embarrassed by our failures, but be, <coughs> we should not be embarrassed by our failures, but be celebrated for the courage to fight through the challenges. It is scary, but my definition of fear Face everything and rise. We never know what the spark is that will come from to help us rise. For me, it was a, uh, along this journey, it was being confronted by somebody who I didn't have much contact with, but felt the need to tell me their opinion as well as others. As I would hear this verbal barrage as was assaulted, I felt this person's anger and possible hopes that I go back to that dark place and finish the job I first started. Now the funny thing about this confrontation was that was the spark I needed to lift myself up and figure out the ways to rebuild and find the right resources to recalibrate and put myself back together. I faced the challenges by using the resources and techniques that made Dave 2.0. We are all success stories because we choose to overcome them 
by living through the burning ashes, finding the ways to regrow with more strength. Part of the strength that we have is when we ground ourselves. Remember, the words earth and heart are the same letters. Grounding ourselves by training our brain to see the love in everything allows your brain to build resiliency, to move beyond the past, able to be in the present and have a new, better future. For me, the truths led to healing and learning opportunities to rewrite my story. There was always an R in my heart. I rose. I learned ways to rebuild. I found ways to renew and recharge and reignite my fire and found ways to be resilient. When we ground ourselves in our hearts and train our brains, then our fires are always burning bright. Thank you.